If you have been asked by your manager to write tests for a list of items on a page and finding it difficult to test a list of components or stumbling onto warnings from Jess about something you don't know what caused it, then this video should definitely help you in that regard. Today we will take a look at how to make full use of the get all by provided to us by the React Testing Library. Subscribe to the channel for more coding tips. We will be using an actual real life project built using Next.js for this video. It's a game called Click and Sound. The link is in the video description as well as the source code for this project. Here we have a leaderboard component which we'll be using as our test subject in this video, which is supposed to show a list of online players with their high score values to the page. We need to test the leaderboard component to ensure that it's fully functional. To start off, we create a leaderboard.test.tsx file in the test directory. We import both render and screen from the testing library, then import the leaderboard component. Going back to the leaderboard component, we notice that it has a hook called use leaderboard, which returns online players using socket since it's a real time based game. We need to mock this hook since we aren't interested in it for this video. To do that, we use the just mock function and pass in the path to the use leaderboard file. This will mock the hook and keep the test isolated from the socket IO. Since we are using TypeScript in this project, we need a way to get the tiles for the mock function. To do this, first import use leaderboard, then assign the use leaderboard to a variable using TypeScript type custom. We change the type of the variable using just mock function and pass in the type of use leaderboard. Now we can harness the full power of type just mock functions. In the first test, we need to render 10 players to the document. First, we create a fixture of 10 players. Since we have mocked the hook to retrieve the players, fixtures have different kinds of meaning and in this context, we want our test to be predictable and ensure consistency with the application. So players should have the same data structure as the data returned from the player when the application is run. Using the mock use leaderboard, we return the players from the player's fixture by importing player's JSON file and passing it to the mock return value of the mock use leaderboard. Then render the component onto the screen using render function. I said that the list is rendered onto the page using the get by row and passing in the list row. The list is used here since the ul tag has a default row of list. To check that the total number of lists in the page is 10, we use the get all by row and pass in the list item row. This will return a list of all the components that has the row of list item. And the li tag already has a default rule of list item therefore it will be returned as well in dealing with list of return components assertions like to have class to have test content aren't applicable since they deal with a single component to assert the return list we use the to have length to check that the total number of components rendered is indeed 10. Running the test, it successfully passes but with a warning indicating to us that the test didn't exit gracefully, meaning there might be a leak somewhere. To detect the leak, we use the detect open handles option for the JS CLI, which detects that socket IO is active even though we have mocked the hook in making use of the API. To rectify this, we pass a second argument to the JS mock function, which is a function that returns a just mock function. We are only returning a mock function because the file containing the hook only exports a single default function. Running the test again still passes but without the warning. In the next test, we want to actually see the 10 usernames and scores are shown on the page. At this point, since we have to repeat the mock return value, we can move it to the just hook before each for it to run before each test and also minimize code duplication. Then render the leaderboard component. I said that the total number of 10 text components with the word layer using the get all by text. We also assert that there are 10 scores in the document using get all by text ID. Running the test again fails this time since none of the components has a player text written inside. Checking the output given by the test, we see that the ID of the users is rather shown on the document. We then modify the use leaderboard component to show the username instead. Running the test again, the assertion fails. The first assertion passes, but the second can fail since there is no component with the test ID of score. Adding back to the leaderboard component and adding the test ID to the score component, now the tests are passing. In the next test, we want to ensure that the player is actually shown on the page and not just the total number of players. Using just each function, we pass in an array of arrays containing the test data we want to accept. Since the each function of just returns a function when it's called, we then call the function again with another care bracket. This is called carrying in functional program. If you want to know more about scaring and functional programming, 
comment down below to see more videos on it. The second function takes in two parameters. The first is the test description and the second is a function where the test data passed to it. You might have noticed that in the test description we are using some symbols that being percent %p and percent %d. This is to positionally inject parameters into the description. The percent %p being the username and the percent %d is the score or the number. If you are familiar with printf from C then this follows almost the exact same principle. Comment below if you want to see more use cases of just each function. In a function, we are provided the username and the score for each test data. You may think of the test.each as array for each in which it will go to each item in the array and pass the values in that array to the function. We render the leaderboard to the screen, then I said that the username does not exist on the page using the regex class from JavaScript and passing the username to the constructor. For the score access, we need to do a bit of manipulation with the get or by test ID. Since we aren't adding the player score to the test ID of the component, we aren't able to test using both the score test ID and the player score and it's not ideal to assert based on the score shown on the page using get by text since there could be multiple components that have the exact same number. In order to fix this issue, we pass a function to the get all by test ID which takes in the test which is the test ID text and the content which is the node or component related to that text. With this, we can do a simple boolean check. The first part is checking to ensure that the text is actually score and the second part checks that the text content of the component matches the player's score and finally ensure that the assertion leads to a single component being found. For the last test, we don't want any players to be rendered onto the screen when there aren't any players available. In this case, we need to return undefined for the mock use leaderboard using mock return value once, which will override the default value being returned only once when it's called inside the component. I said that there are no lists shown onto the page. Using the get by row results in an error. Since get by row requires that the component exists, and if not, it will throw an error. To resolve this issue of error being thrown, we use the query by row instead. Query by row won't throw an error if the component is not found, but will return a null value, which is perfect for this use case since the component does not exist. And using the not assertion will ensure that the test passes due to the component not exist. For bonus content, we can use another method to mock our use leader by creating a mock folder in the same directory as the use leaderboard file and export a just mock function and we can remove the second parameter of the just mock in the test file this ensures that the mock function is always used whenever we mock the use leaderboard using just mock in any test and won't have to worry about the just one in addition we can return the player's fixture in the mock file and clean up the test by removing mock return value references and the test still passes if you enjoyed the video or find it informative Consider giving it a like. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.